employers are worried about that today and that it's going to take more time. They also may want to sell it as a plus. They may say, look, we have the best courts in the world and the, cost, the courts are uh, protecting the integrity of the arbitration. If there is uh, fraud, uh, the courts will intervene. Whereas in, in France, the courts would say, we do not want to intervene. We think that the arbitrators can take care of the problem and should, at least in the first instance, and we will intervene only at the end of the process to tell you if the award is valid or not and to supervise the job of the arbitrators after the fact vis-à-vis -vis the requirements of public, uh, international public policy, um, but not, not at, during the arbitral process. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fact. So mm -hmm. if you compare, that's a way to... No. Now, on the continent, you can have an arbitration. In English, you can have an arbitration with witnesses. You can have a certain degree of discovery or document production. Um, and you can have a certain style of arbitration which looks like an international, which, right. which is very similar to what you get before the U.S. courts in terms of style of advocacy and language. But the, in terms of court interference, you would have uh, much less. Right. Right. And there is a cost uh, associated uh, to that. Yeah, the, the discovery question is one that I have to tell you, I, I never really think much of when we decide whether or not to get in, you know, to, to choose a particular forum or not. I guess our experience is with international arbitration, you can get discovery if you really need it in most instances. And if you don't, then you probably didn't, you know, don't want to have it in any event. Um, most of the disputes that we have are, are largely, you know, largely based on documents where witnesses are, are less important to the overall determination. Yeah given that they're commercial disputes, commercial contracts. Um, I, th I, th I think um, that's, not a that, that's not a factor which would be a factor of choice between the different venues because pretty much you would have more or less the same thing everywhere. If you are located in the U.S. or in England, you may have a little more on the continent, a little less, but that's just a question of degree, and I don't think it's a, it's a factor on which you can really choose. Um, right, that's exactly. It's not a factor that... The, the, moves our decision. I, 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 I think yeah. you're absolutely yeah. right on this. One factor which does have an impact is the number of arbitrators, though, because I, I have done lots of arbitration. I've seen maybe more than 300 or whatever. I, I, I lost uh, track. But I, I'm coming to the conclusion that core arbitrators are seldom neutral. And in fact, you don't want them to be neutral. You appoint them to, to, to be on your side and help your case, whatever. But of course, you have another arbitrator on the other side doing the reverse. And at the end of the day, the decision is in the hands of the chairperson. Now, there is one element which is clear is that with three arbitrators, it will be more costly. That's a fact of life because you would have to pay three people and not one. And maybe more importantly, it will slow down the process because, of course, the chairman has to be polite with the co-arbitrators. Of course, if the co-arbitrators are saying, well, I'm sorry, I'm not free in the coming three months, he has to indulge, at least initially. Maybe the third time the co-arbitrator cancels a date, he, the chair will react uh, author, uh, in an authoritative manner. But, you know, it, it nevertheless will slow down the process. And what do you do uh, when you are an arbitrator, when you, one of your co-arbitrators is, is sitting on the draft uh, procedural order or something? Okay, you can push, you can say, okay, it's going to go tomorrow if you don't answer, but it will nevertheless slow down the process. What if your co -arbitrator, the co-arbitrator resigns or threatens to resign? and so on. So it, it is a factor which has a cost. It may be better in certain type of disputes like the large construction disputes on a power plant or, or something like that. It may be better to have three people uh, when the case is extremely complicated, but in many cases it's just additional expense and, and time. time. Yeah, I mean, I, we, we clearly have seen that often. I, I think I've, I've mentioned to you, we have an arbitration in India, that every three or four months we would have a hearing, and the arbitration is still pending after seven years, um, and it would go at, at hiccups where we would sit down with the arbitrators, and there was one arbitrator 
who just had a full agenda, and it was only once every three, four, or six months that he would have a weekend that would be available. And so every three to six months, we'd have a hearing in Calcutta on a weekend, on a Saturday and Sunday that he had free. Um, he, by the way, he was the other party's appointed arbitrator. I think that that may have been also a way just to make our lives a little bit less easy in the proceedings. Uh, One factor is also the way the arbitrators are paid, because in many, uh, in many cases, in many institutions, it's on an hourly rate or daily rate basis. And that is no incentive to uh, to go fast. Indeed, the, you know, if they have lengthy hearings, they will pay, be paid more. Now, in uh, in ICC arbitration, uh, they are paid according to a scale, and it makes no difference if they spend more time or less time. So, if they have or should have an incentive in ICC arbitration to go faster. You, you would think that, although I I, I have to tell you. Uh, <laughs> The, the fact that the ICC limits, and we should be nice to the ICC since we're sitting in the ICC conference room today, um, but the, uh, the fact that, that the ICC has a fixed fee amount, or at least a, 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 an overall set amount that can go from a minimum to a maximum would encourage greater efficiency in arbitrations. I have to tell you, I haven't seen that to be something that encourages arbitrators to move a lot faster. I agree that the incentive would be there, but I haven't, you know, my experience has not been that, that they move. Well, it should certainly incentivize the arbitrators not to indulge in accepting lengthy hearings right. which are not really necessary. But well, maybe that the absence of, in other words, it, it's less an incentive here as it is, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a negative incentive right. in the other cases where the arbitrators are being paid an hour. Uh, right. yeah. I think that's correct. Yeah, yeah the, the um, well, I mean, one of the things, you know, I, you're, you're, you're absolutely right that there are different levels of risk that we deal with in our contracts. One of them is that you know, the large contracts, if it's going to be a you know, 100, 200 million dollar power plant or liquid natural gas installation, the other types of contracts that we have are simple equipment and services sales where you know, we're selling a turbine or, a, or an engine or you know, a small plant, you know, a 10, 15 million dollar um, plant uh, maybe for water purification. Uh, and, and those are likely to give rise to disputes of my, over discrete issues, technical issues or simple breach of contract. Because why wouldn't we consider, in those cases, always having a sole arbitrator? Well, what are we given up by not having three arbitrators in those cases? Nothing. You are giving up having two non-independent, because that's the fact of life. Uh, the co-arbitrators are sometimes not independent or often are not independent people who are sitting next to the person who will indeed uh, decide to do most of the work. In ICC, uh, in ICC cases, they are paid 40%, 30%, 30